I think it's important to say a little bit about salivary glands. We have three pairs of major salivary glands, submandibular glands, which are situated under the jaw, sublingual glands, which are under the tongue, and parotid glands, which are situated in front of ear. In case of submandibular gland, the most common reason for surgery is obstruction. When, for example, stone form formed within the duct of the gland and other minimally invasive techniques are not possible. For parotid glands, it could be due to tumors, which are mostly benign, but still it could be malignant tumors. It could be due to chronic infection and uh, inflammation, which is not responding to other forms of treatments, including medical management. In rare cases, it could be due to excessive salivary flow. And to control the amount of salivary flow, patient needs surgery of the parotid gland. Again, it depends on which salivary gland we are talking about. With regards to the sublingual glands, which are involved under the tongue, the approach is going through the mouth. With regards to submandibular gland, small incisions, sometimes four to six centimeter, place under the lower jaw. And for parotid gland, the approach is incising and going through the skin in front of the ear and extending behind ear and going to the neck in order to hide most of the incision. The main associated risks, I can divide them in, into general and specific. The general risks are infection, bleeding, swelling, pain, that could be associated with, with any sort of surgery. Specific risks, it depends on which gland we're talking about. With regards to submandibular gland situated under the lower jaw, the most important risk is the nerve, although it's not common, but the nerve which gives supply to sensation of the tongue could be affected. There is very rare chance of damaging a nerve, which is responsible for movement of corner of the mouth, and this is branch of facial nerve, but that's extremely rare. With regards to parotid gland situated in front of the ear, the most important risk is risk of damaging one or more branches of facial nerve responsible for movements of muscles of the face. So depending, of, depending on which branch is affected, patient can have paralysis of that muscle. The other risks with parotid gland surgery would be numbness of earlobe, and occasionally, there is a phenomenon called phrase syndrome, which this happens when the nerves from salivary gland come in contact with sweat glands of skin. And therefore, whenever patients try to eat or think of food, they can start sweating in front of the ear, hence the name gustatory sweating. There are other complications and risks which are not common at all. And with regards to sublingual gland, the risk is damaging lingual nerve, which is responsible for sensation of the tongue. And if this nerve is affected, patient can have numbness or altered sensation of the tongue. Surgery is not always the best solution. There are other techniques, especially, for example, with regards to obstruction of submandibular duct. There are treatments such as shock waves or minimally invasive techniques using scopes endoscopically to retrieve the stone are better option. The recovery time is usually one to two weeks, obviously depending on which gland and what type of surgery is performed. And of course, if there are complications, this could uh, lengthen the recovery time. With regards to doing the surgery or whether there is a need for repeat surgery, again, it depends what type of surgery. For example, if procedure performed endoscopically to retrieve the stone and the technique fails, yes, the patient would 
regard further treatment or even removal of the gland. 